Okay, so first I want to know, what is Evalo? What are you doing? That's for you. Thank you. Um, so Evalo is um, a company here from Karlsruhe. We are the first ones to have built um, an electrically propelled multicopter, man carrying, so that's the unique part about it, otherwise it would be just another drone. Um, and we've been um, you know, striving towards getting certification and getting it to market, which we are very close to getting to. Very close to getting to, okay. What's changed for you since winning the Code N Award? So uh, when we joined the Code N, it was 2013, where the first small scale model, we see it later also in the video, I put it in, and it was for all people's vision, we knew what we ha uh, have in development in behind, and everybody thinks uh, the fancy thing, perhaps it come in 30 years, and now we are uh, four years later, I think, and now we are uh, on that point that really high-class people in the world think this is coming and not in 30 years, this is coming in the next two or five years. This is coming. All right. Yes. Also coming is a video. Let's roll that tape. Okay. Um, we are coming from Karlsruhe and we are proud that uh, the revolution of mobility is uh, in the heart of the city because the invention of the first a bike, it's uh, the Tricena, it's uh, the first wheeled mobility device for, of mankind. This guy comes from Calso, although Mr. Benz comes from Calso. This is the first patent motor wagon from Carl Benz. Uh, and then our small team also read uh, a history of mobility because this is the first all electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft with the manned flight. So this is also already written in the history of aviation. And that was also here in Karlsruhe. And out of that, we had the product of a two-seater aircraft. These are the first digital uh, designs. It's uh, driven by design and digital, but we uh, get it into the production. So you see how to produce this aircraft. It's completely out of... Uh, composite in the whole, the most parts are of carbon fiber composites, and uh, also the cabin is out of carbon fiber. And this is it was the, the f our first presentation in 2013. That was I think that was the years of code N. So that was uh, Indeed, some was. some months later and another event. And but to, but to develop an aircraft like this, um, you have to develop every part by yourself because. Uh, with existing uh, motors or electronics, uh, such a device wouldn't fly. So we have to, de to de develop really every part. So this is a test of rotor plates we developed. And this is a high-class simulation of uh, what does the aerodynamics of an aircraft like this. There's also really m more research in that part, and the other parts are more development. This was um, also the first flights in 2013. That was here in the DM Arena in Karlsruhe. Uh, this aircraft was the first time in the air, and um, then we had another two hard years. So to get this um, structure of the aircraft into a certification process, this is a normal process for every aircraft and every helicopter, where you test uh, the structure if it's strong enough and doesn't break when it comes too hard down. And this is uh, not so complicated because we know that from other aircrafts. But the next part is how to get a certification for a completely new kind of flying. Because we have, uh, this is the, that we had on Code N in the exhibition. Um, so we have more than 130 uh, uh, computers on board who are communicating with, uh, with each other. Everybody of these, every of these uh, has his own software. So. We are more a software company than a hardware company. Uh, it looks like a helicopter company, but we are the, the software in the air, uh, mostly, but also... Uh, and in these flights that were unmanned uh, with the rope, we had no certification until that. We, can s we, we showed the authorities how we make it safe. So we switched off motors, we switched off batteries, we switched off uh, control system, and it flies already really safe. And for that, we get... Uh, in the beginning, they are permitted to fly. So this is a, uh, the allowance to fly all around Germany with no restrictions. So we have really uh, now uh, our biggest milestone is to get this certification fly around. And after that, um, it was an honor for me to do 
uh, the first uh, man flight with that aircraft. And if you see me, you know this aircraft can carry two normal people because I'm <laughs> two in one. Okay, so. Um, and what you see in that flight for uh, when we have a look inside, it's controlled only with the joystick. Um, I can put my hand up the joystick and it flies by itself, no problem. And the only thing to do is to climb up is to put the thumb up and it flies up. And if I let the thumb off, you see it now, uh, it climbs. And if I stop with the thumb, it stays in the high and the rest is what I do with the joystick. The aircraft makes the same, so it's you don't have to learn anything. You can sit in and fly. That's uh, really easy. And But also very important is uh, for us, it's not only the easy way to fly, because uh, normally we think the future is uh, uh, autonomous mobility for the cars and also for the aviation and for the aircraft like this. And this aircraft can fly autonomous, it's no problem. Uh, uh, it's, it's a standard technique in these days with the drone, so um, it's also hard to get an easy uh, um, function for a person to fly it really easy. So. This is a further step to get it so flying so easy. And this is funny. You think this is a toy or a small drone. Uh, also, when we look to these videos, uh, it's filmed from another uh, from a small drone. We had the feeling, oh, it's, it doesn't look like a big aircraft, but this is 10 meter, uh, uh, the rotor array. So it's not small. And um, in this flight, we, we show that it can fly really fast and uh, also climb very fast. and. These are also test flights unmanned, because uh, you can push over the limit unmanned and you don't do uh, risky things in the area where, where you have uh, no experience. In this kind of flying, nobody has experience. So it's uh, really cool for us that we can do it uh, unmanned. And this is what we've done, I think, two months ago. So now, um, for you, it's perhaps interesting how sound, how is the sound of the aircraft. This is really not loud, and also the sound is uh, comfortable. It's not like a helicopter or aircraft where it's really aggressive sound. So it's like a warm swarm. So, uh, and we made also sound tests, uh, uh, and we can compare with, comp with other helicopters, for example, and we know we are much more really much more uh, low noises than the other aircraft. So this is a, a few in the future. You see, you saw a four-seater, for example, or a, a, a system how to can uh, put it uh, in, in a hangar and uh, save space. And also um, there's a big future market with heavyweight uh, working stations in the air, like uh, agriculture, for example. This is an aircraft we, we, we can we could produce in, 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 in a half a year or a year uh, and, and ca could produce an aircraft like this. Um, but in, in our uh, next month, we are really hard to get uh, more uh, manned aircrafts in the air. And this is a, a funny thing. I may, was a keynote speaker at the Swiss um, Eco Summit in 2014. And these guys made from Switzerland, from the government, they make this video. Uh, and to show the people um, how you can, uh, uh, you don't have to, to, to build up infrastructure like roads and like anything, and uh, it's very expensive. So if you have aircraft like this, you, you can really uh, um, need not so much money for the infrastructure. And these are some picture how what we think it's in the future. We think we have autonomous roads in the air. And this is a real photo. And although this is the end of my How presentation. How often have we thought about it? Well, it's an absolutely fascinating concept, and I have a couple of questions, but I want to open the floor to our audience. First of all, yeah, let's give them a round of applause. That's a really cool idea. I can see why you guys won. And we are from Karlsruhe, from here, so we are locals. All right, hometown represent. Does anyone in the audience have a question they would like to ask? There we go, you, just talk loud. article. I'm a great fan of what you're doing. I think it's fantastic, the, the helicopter. And I have a question though regarding, well, two questions. One regarding um, 
the battery, battery life, how you see that developing. And uh, the second question is really more to do with weather. Um, uh, I fly myself and uh, weather is the biggest factor to stop anything going from A to B. Um, how do you see that panning out in the future? Okay, thanks. Um, let me take that question. My Tell name is Florian. Name. Sorry. I am um, co-managing director of Evolo with Alex. Um, so, first question, the battery. Um, yes, we are restricted by the current status of battery technology. So, what we promise is we get to market with the first product in the ultralight segment, so a two-person carrying helicopter, in 2018. So, we're really close to our starting line. Um, and we promise we can fly around 30 minutes at that point in time, all electric. Now, we know that's enough for many missions. It may not be enough for all of the missions that people want to use this vehicle for. So we're in parallel working on a hybrid version because I just think um, sitting there keeping your fingers crossed that battery technology will advance faster than it has in the past five years is not good strategy. So um, that also tells you something about our expectation. So since we don't know how fast and rapidly it will progress, we go hybrid for specific missions. Now, if you want to operate in highly densely populated areas, inner cities, you want to stay with all electric if, as long as you can, simply due to noise concerns, noise and emission concerns. Question one. Question two, um, what was that again? The, oh, the weather thing, yeah. So, yes. Um, Brief answer, please. We're running yeah, over time The here. product we're bringing to market in 2018 is an ultralight, so you are restricted to visual flight uh, um, conditions. Um, but we believe the technology is there. We just need the, the appropriate uh, um, regulation in place to also fly under all weather conditions. All weather meaning we are somehow restricted by wind conditions, so that'll affect any aircraft you have. But uh, we're working towards being more weatherproof than what you're used to in flying privately today. Thank a lot you. of potential and a lot of promise. Let's get a big round of applause for E. Valo. Thank you very much for being with us today.